If your business uses Microsoft Teams and you feel like Teams creation is getting out of hand, uh, people are naming them all kinds of different things, uh, they're not really clear on the purpose of the team, maybe even similar teams are being created, we've got a great approval-based tool for you that should really help streamline that process. Hi guys, my name is Michael, and I'm here today to talk to you about a tool that we've developed to help with Microsoft Teams creation. So we've noticed this with our customers that a lot of them complain that their uh, users are just getting out of control with all kinds of different naming conventions and teams that have the same purpose. Um, and so we just want to develop an easy to use tool that kind of just helps streamline that process. So it starts with uh, storing the requests in SharePoint. So I'll show you a SharePoint list. Uh, and then the users themselves actually using a Power App, uh, which has a nice form in it that they can put all the information. And then lastly, a flow uh, through Power Automate that actually uh, generates an approval process. And then if that is successful, we'll actually create the team automatically. Um, if you are interested in leaving any comments below, we would love to hear from you. If you have any questions, uh, also please subscribe to our channel and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first place we'll look at is our database in SharePoint. So as you can see here on the screen, we've got our title, which is gonna be the name of the team. We've got our visibility, which is either gonna be public or private. Uh, we've got the description. Uh, we've got who the owners of the team are going to be, who requested the team, the request date, uh, which defaults to today, uh, the approval date, so when it's actually approved, the approval status, so it will start out as pending by default and then either approved or rejected, depending on what the approver does. Uh, if it is approved, a group ID will be sent back by Microsoft uh, Power Automate uh, with the group ID of the team. And then I also learned this cool trick recently where you can have an audit trail, basically. So this last column here is uh, multi-line text. But instead of it all being one big blob, it'll actually have um, things that are entered in automatically that have timestamps on it. So for example, team requested and team approved and team created. So that just leaves a nice little audit trail for us. Um, so that's basically what's happening on the back end. This is where all of our data will be stored. So right now there's only one entry for a marketing team, but every time a request is made through the Power App, it will be automatically sent to this list. So let's go ahead and jump into the Power Apps. Uh, so this is a basic uh, app with only two screens to it. This first screen is a form where the usual user will actually input the information for their request. So the first thing they need is their proposed team name. Let's say sales. Uh, next is the visibility, public or private. Uh, public being meaning anyone in the company can see it and private meaning that it's just for a group of people that are in, in by invite only. So we'll call it public. Uh, description of the team, uh, to discuss everything sales related. And then owners, we here at Bulb like to have a rule where each team requires two owners. Uh, it just makes divvying up those um, kind of administrative tasks a little bit easier. So that's just something that we like to do. Doesn't mean that you have to, but we have actually put some validation on this field so that this submit button will not actually be available to click until there are two owners in there, but that can easily be changed as well. I'll go ahead and uh, put myself as one of the owners and then also Mitch. So you'll notice the submit button is now clickable. If any of these fields were not filled out, it will go gray again, so that's cool. And also, if when you were putting in your team name, uh, you put in something that already existed, it would throw an error telling you what happened, invalid duplicate name, and also gray out the submit button. So that's kind of cool. Go back to sales. So then we'll click submit, and this will actually kick off our flow, which will start the approval process. So click submit. This is the second screen of the app, very simple, just telling the user that, hey, we've been successful. Uh, if they want to begin a new request, they can start that here and go back to that form again, or they can click the other button, which was close. So then uh, the flow will start automatically. I'll go ahead and go over to my email now. Um, and it takes anywhere from 30 seconds to a couple minutes for the uh, approval emails to actually start to come out. 
We have set it up so that first an email will be sent to the requester, uh, which in this case is me, and the approver, which in this case is me. So I'm gonna be getting both emails, but the, uh, in both cases it will have all the information. So it'll have the team name, the visibility, the description, and the owners. So we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit to when those emails show up. All right, so our emails uh, came through. So this first one we're looking at is the email that was sent to me as the requester. Uh, you'll notice that it's from uh, an account called Service. So we just use an account like that to hook up uh, things involving Power Apps or Power Automate, uh, just to clean that up. You could call it Help Desk, uh, or it could come from an actual person's account. Uh, but it's got all that information I told you it would have. Pretty self-explanatory, just to let them know that the request went through. The next email is me as the approver. So this is the request coming through. Uh, and it's uh, pretty neat actually. You can see all of this information right within the email and then actually approve or reject it, again, right from inside the email. So all the same information. So I'll go ahead and click on approve. Gives you a chance to put some comments, optional comments, which is nice. So I'll say, looks great. And then click on submit. And that will go ahead and send that off to the flow, which will then continue uh, processing the actual creation of the new team. So this usually takes maybe two minutes. Ah, we noticed we just got another email that came in. So this is an email sent to me as the requester saying, your team's request has been approved by myself. Yay. And then uh, the comments looks great. So now we just need to wait a couple minutes for the team to actually be created. All right, so a few minutes has passed and now let's go ahead and go into the admin view of Microsoft Teams. I already refreshed the page and we can see there's our sales team. So it was automatically created by the flow. Very cool. And if we go ahead and click into it, uh, we can see it also made both Mitch and I the owners. So that's pretty much it guys. Uh, so we start with the SharePoint list, which holds all of our data and the requests. Uh, it moves through the Power App and then the flow automatically creates the team once it's approved. So if this seems like a solution that would work well for you and your company, uh, we're gonna go, go ahead and make this available to you as a downloadable resource. Uh, it'll have three parts. The first one will be the SharePoint template that will automatically create the list for you. Uh, the second will be the Power App itself, which you can easily import into the Power Apps environment. And then the last thing will be the flow that you can import into the Power Automate environment. So we hope these things will be useful to you. Uh, we also recently recorded a video on a Power Apps theme template, so go ahead and check that out if that's something that interests you. Uh, please keep an eye on this channel. We are trying to push out a lot of great content that we think you guys would enjoy. And uh, thanks so much and have a great day.